everyone in this video we will study about melanoma so what is melanoma so melanoma is a type of a skin cancer and is a, a tumor of pigmented cells that is the melanocytes now we will discuss in detail its pathogenesis its clinical features in this video so it is mostly related to acquired mutations and these mutations are caused by uv radiation exposure the commonest site of melanoma is your largest organ that is skin other areas which can be involved by melanoma are mucosal surfaces mucosal surfaces of oral anogenital mucosal surfaces you can have oropharynx git genitourinary tracts meninges and uv of the eye okay uv of the eye is also a very important site for melanoma so you have your skin and mucosal surfaces along with uvia then the clinical features okay now you can a uh, person can have a simple mole or a malignant melanoma so how to differentiate between the two how to educate a person that uh, it is a, a melanoma or it is a benign nevi so in case of melanoma there are some signs known as a b c d e signs of melanoma first is asymmetry if you uh, draw a line between the mole the two halves of the mole look different so if two halves of the mole look different that is asymmetry second is b that is border that is the borders they are poorly defined a benign mole okay a simple mole will be circular in the shape will have even borders however in case of melanoma the borders will be poorly defined or will be irregular will have notching okay you can see notching present over here so this is the features of melanoma then color okay now the color will vary from light to brown areas then to black areas so color variation is also variegated color is there in case of melanoma then diameter okay so diameter more than 6 mm okay is mostly seen in the case of melanoma however benign ones are less than 6 mm so these are just warning signs e stands for evolution evolution that means if the mole is changing evolving with time okay so that is evolution so this is your a b c d e's of melanoma so you have asymmetry irregular borders variegated color increasing diameter and evolution that is change over the time now going to the morphology okay gross morphology how it looks like so as we discussed the a b c d e is also so same ways the morphology will be there that the melanomas they show variation in the color they can be black brown red dark blue gray these can hues can be present then sometimes hyperpigmentation in a hyperpigmented mole can also be there there can be some zones of hyperpigmentation which can be present then borders of the melanoma they are irregular and often notched now how does melanoma progress okay firstly there is a radial growth phase then there is a vertical growth phase so if this is melanoma okay so firstly it will grow horizontally that is the radial growth phase that means it will grow into surrounding epidermis and somewhat into superficial dermis only okay here there is uh, it seems that the tumor cells they lack the capacity to metastasize then second phase is the vertical growth phase okay in vertical growth phase what happens is the tumor it grows deep okay vertically it grows into deep dermis now in case of radial growth we have various patterns okay you can have tumors can look differently okay first is lentigo maligna okay then is superficial spreading then is acral or mucosal 
lentiginous melanoma okay so mucosal will be unrelated to the sun exposure superficial spreading most common type of melanoma it uh, occurs on sun exposed skin then you have lentigo maligna that is a lesion present on the face of the older man older men and it remains in the radial growth phase for many decades so these are the variants of the radial growth phase then going to the vertical growth phase okay so after variable and unpredictable period of time melanoma shifts from the radial phase to a vertical growth phase in vertical growth phase what happens is the tumor cells they will go into deep dermal layers and present as a mass okay so vertical growth phase here the tumor somewhat acquires the uh, tendency to metastasize okay so vertical growth phase here the tumor then goes into metastatic potential so for a uh, grading of the tumor in the melanoma two classifications are followed okay there is one known as breast nose thickness and one known as clark's level okay so what is breast nose thickness breast nose thickness is nothing just the tumor uh, size okay so uh, we will take from the epidermis to the deepest part where the tumor has invaded into the tissue and its thickness on histology is known as breast nose thickness so what is breast nose thickness it is just the depth of invasion a distance from the superficial epidermal layer to the deepest intradermal tumor cells this is known as breast nose thickness second is the clark's level now what is clark's level here specific uh, uh classification is there if the melanoma is present only in the epidermis it is known as level 1 if this goes into just superficial dermis that is papillary dermis just goes into the papillary dermis that is level 2 then level 3 is if it is present throughout the papillary dermis then level 4 is if it goes into reticular dermis and level 5 is if it goes into subcutaneous tissue so this is your epidermis okay then you have your papillary dermis then you have your reticular dermis and last is the subcutaneous tissue so level 1 level 2 if it involves whole of the papillary dermis level 3 if it goes into reticular dermis level 4 and if it goes into subcutaneous tissue level 5 so this is the clark's level so what is the importance of doing all that importance it it gives a prognosis okay more the deep goes okay more the breast nose thickness more deep the clark's level that is bad prognosis and this aids in the management of the person so how is the morphology okay now we are going to the histology that is the microscopic morphology so individual melanoma cells if you will see melanoma cells that is malignant melanoma cells they are larger than the normal melanocytes so normal melanocytes are present in the last layer of the epidermis you have their presence so these melanoma cells they are larger than them okay they are they have large nuclei they have irregular contours okay you they will very importantly they have a big eosinophilic nucleoli okay in the nucleus you have a big eosinophilic nucleoli this is a very characteristic feature of the malignant melanoma and you can see the tumor cells can be present in radial fashion also in the vertical fashion okay so here you can see there are nests of tumor cells so this is your epidermis okay this is your epidermis which is going on okay these are the nest of the tumor cells which are present so nests and lobules of tumor cells present these are the malignant melanoma cells now going to the higher picture you will see these are the nucleus which are present okay so nucleus they have um, 
a single dot like structure inside them that is the nucleoli and pigment is also present so pigment gives the clue okay so pigment along with such bizarre such bad looking nucle nuclei having eosinophilic nucleoli this gives the picture of your malignant melanoma then you will have numerous mitotic figures whenever something is proliferating in carcinoma so mitosis is there okay but here the mitosis is very much prominent so you can see this is mitosis this is mitotic figures the mitosis will be very much really present in the malignant melanoma now going to the pathogenesis a very important part how the malignant melanoma develops okay the majority of the malignant melanoma they are not genetically inherited uh, they are sporadic and they are related to one and single most thing that is your uv radiation protection uh, uv radiation damage from the sun exposure so uv radiation is strongly associated with your dna damage so it can lead to melanoma so what are the genetic mutations which can occur so the mutation can occur at many levels first is the mutation which disrupt cell cycle control genes so to understand this you should have a basic knowledge of neoplasia okay the pathogenesis of neoplasia i do have a separate uh, lecture series on neoplasia uh, in, you can see that also so mutations uh having that disrupt cell cycle control genes second is mutation that activate pro growth signaling pathway and lastly mutation that activate telomerase so these are the three mutation which can take place we will understand one by one okay one is the cell cycle control genes what are those we will see okay so mutations that disrupt cell cycle control genes so you have a cell cycle okay this is the cell cycle if you remember okay so the cell cycle regulates the division of the cell okay so any uh, thing which disrupts here will lead to tumor formation so firstly what is there cdk n2a gene mutation now this gene encodes three tumor suppressor that is p15 p16 and p14 so if you see here you have p16 p15 okay so these genes are encoded by your uh, cdk n 2a so if uh, you have if there is problem okay so what will happen is tumor suppressor will not be there if there is no tumor suppressor the proliferation will increase okay so p16 uh, your in p16 has role on cdk4 okay so you should remember cell cycle so if p16 is defaulty it will not able to control cdk4 so it will again lead to proliferation p14 also okay p14 is involved in tp53 tumor suppressor gene so these are your first one second is mutation that stimulate pro growth signaling pathways so pro growth signaling pathways are pathways which promote the proliferation so here you have tyrosine kinase receptor okay then ras gene is there okay then there is a pathway that is p13k p10 pathway one is braf okay so anything which activates these okay if you have activating mutation of ras gene if you have activating mutation of p uh, of p13 okay uh, and activating mutation of braf gene so this will further lead to increase proliferation okay so activation of always a pro oncogene okay that will lead to proliferation and if there is deactivation of tumor suppressor gene then again it will stimulate proliferation so you have mutation of ras braf then nras okay the, if there is loss of p10 mutation so these all will again lead to your tumor uh, proliferation okay to understand this you have you should have a basic knowledge of the neoplasia okay so go through the 
साइकिल सेल साइकिल गो थ्रू द बेसिक ऑंकोजीन थिंग देन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस बेटर देन यू हैव म्यूटेशन दैट एक्टिवेट टीलोमरेज सो देर आर टीलोमर्स विच प्रिजर्व एंड प्रोटेक्ट द सेल्स फ्रॉम सैनिसेंस सो री एक्टिवेशन ऑफ टीलोमरेज इफ देयर इज ओके सो इट विल अगेन लीड टू लॉन्जिविटी ऑफ सेल्स इट विल लीड टू पॉलिफ्रेशन ऑफ सेल्स एंड देयर फोर सो म्यूटेशन दैर एक्टिवेट टीलोमरेज देन अगेन विल लीड टू मेलेनोमा सो म्यूटेशन इन द प्रमोटर ऑफ टर्ट विच इनकोड्स द सब कैटालिटिक सब यूनिट ऑफ टीलोमरेज इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली म्यूटेटेड जीन इन केस ऑफ एक्टिवेशन ऑफ टीलोमरेज मेरेज लास्ट इज गोइंग टू द रिस्क फैक्टर्स विच आर इन केस ऑफ मिलिग्न मेलेनोमा यू हैव सन एक्सपोज सर्फेसिस ओके वुमेन आर मोर प्रॉम प्रीडिस्पोज लाइटली पिगमेंटेड इंडिविजुअल दैट इज इन इट इज कॉमन इन वाइट्स ओके बिकॉज नेचुरली द पिगमेंट इज प्रिवेंटिव ओके सो लाइटली पिगमेंटेड इंडिविजुअल्स आर मोर प्रोन सम जेनेटिक वेरियंट्स सवियर सन बर्नस ओके सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिस्क फैक्टर्स इन मेलिग्न मेलेनोमा मेलिग्न मेलेनोमा हाउ इट गोज थ्रू दे इज अ बिनाइन नीवस इट गोज इन टू फेज नोन एज डिस प्लास्टिक नीवस देन इट गोज टू रेडियल फेज ग्रोथ देन वर्टिकल फेज ग्रोथ एंड लास्टली टू द मेटास्टेटिक मेलेनोमा सो डिस प्लास्टिक नीवस इज अ इन बिटवीन एरिया ओके when it goes from benign to radial growth phase now what is the difference between a nevus and a melanoma uh, briefly we have discussed but just to revise size of nevus that is nevus means a simple mole okay is mostly less than 6 mm the borders will be smooth round and uniform then the nuclei they will be round okay they will be uniform no mitosis will be present no nucleoli will be present and i will explain the last point later on in the melanoma you will have greater than uh, 10 mm size greater than 6 mm size it will be irregular remember the abcds of melanoma then in uh, morphology irregular contours will be present then you will have a prominent eosinophilic nucleoli and mitosis will also be present one thing more is neurotization neurotization means sometimes the melanocytes they take shape of they take a spindle shape okay so that is known as growing like nerves okay resembling nerve tissue so a benign nevus sometimes grows in fascicles grows in bundles resembling neural tissue that is known as neurotization however in melanoma neurotization is absent this is one more feature on histology lastly going to the prognostic factors what are the prognostic factors so depending on tumor depth if the breast loss thickness is more the prognosis will be bad number of mitoses if there is ulceration present if there is tumor infiltrating lymphocytes present if these are lymphocytes are present that means prognosis is good okay the lymphocytes they uh, help uh, they help the body okay then lymph uh, lymph node if lymph node is involved obviously it is bad metastasis goes to firstly regional lymph nodes uh, a sentinel lymph node and then distant mets can occur in lungs liver bone and brain the malignant melanoma if caught early has a good prognosis it can be treated with a simple thing that is wide excision with clear sin margin but if the malignant melanoma goes into metastatic phase it has a bad prognosis because this is resistant to both conventional chemotherapy and radiation treatment some uh, prognosis uh, things new uh, treatment modalities have been dis- uh, going in the trial to see if the braf mutation is present so any braf inhibitor helps so uh, mainly if you catch it early okay if you know your um, clinical presentation nicely so if uh, so then 
with wide excision and clear skin margins this is treatable so this was all about malignant melanoma a very important skin cancer uh, do like share and like uh, like this video if you like these type of lectures ask any queries in the comment box thanks for watching thank you